If you live in New York, Boston, or Miami, you may want to invest in a boat, according to a new article in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Because of carbon emissions that are virtually certain on the basis of the lack of policy response to climate change so far, sea levels are now set to rise anywhere from eight inches to seven feet in low-lying coastal areas over the next hundred years. To discuss what this means exactly, we're joined by investigative historian Eric Zeus. Eric, your HuffPost blog is entitled Due to Global Warming, End is Virtually Certain for NYC, Boston, Miami, Holland. Is it that dire? Well, yes, it is. But here's the thing. There's a lot of doubt amongst scientists as to how much sea level is going to be rising during just the next 100 years. We're talking about a few generations there. There's no doubt, realistically, that within 2,000 years, uh, these cities and about half of coastal United States will be uninhabitable. I mean, not just deeply underwater, but really, really under, uninhabitable. So the public is very, very confused because of these timelines. The reality is that the short-term projections by the scientists are a lot have a much bigger range. Uh, I mean, you know, it's between inches and yards. Uh, whereas over 2,000 years, there's realistically, there's no question whatsoever. Um, and anything that we do, I mean, the world does, between, you know, policy responses, between, you know, now and the end of the century is is not going to eliminate the fact that uh, within 2,000 years, New York City will be gone, Miami will be gone, uh, parts of the West Coast will be gone, um, all, virtually all of the um, Gulf Coast, including Houston and, 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 and New Orleans are going to be gone. So, so, sorry to interrupt, Eric, but when, when we talk about such, long, such vast stretches of time, like 2,000 years, uh, are you talking that the only reason, the only cause for this is because of the carbon that we're pumping into the atmosphere? What if we, oh, well, what if we could yeah, suck absolutely. the carbon out of the atmosphere or something in, using new technology that we discover in 50 years' time, 100 years' time? You see, the, the, the physics of this are, are, are well understood and... Uh, the, a poll of the world's leading uh, climatologists showed more than 97% agree both that global warming is happening and that it's happening because of our carbon emissions. There's no realistic question about that. The oil industry has been pumping uh, uh, billions of dollars into PR, and so too has uh, the, the Rupert Murdoch empire and Market Watch and Wall Street Journal and so forth and so on is saying, yeah, well, it's not so. They're not so sure. But I mean, uh, uh, just the, the most modest amount of research capability on the part of an, an intelligent individual will uh, expose that that is uh, a line of bull. I mean, I, I mean, I take your, I, I totally take your point that the jury, the scientific jury is totally in in terms of man-made climate change. The question is that there's still a lot of disagreement among reputable scientists about exactly what kinds of levels of sea increase we're going to see, whether or not there might be geoengineering fixes to mitigate the worst effects. How can we say with any certainty what things are going to look like thousands of years hence? Okay, it, it, the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences are pretty prestigious in science. I mean, what this article said is, hey, Within 2,000 years, we can't, uh, there's no doubt about it. New York will be gone, okay? I mean, let's be realistic. The question is, um, like, for example, amongst economists, you do cost-benefit analyses of how much do, should we care about 2,000 years from now, about our descendants? I mean, maybe each one of us will have 20 descendants, 200, 2,000 descendants, uh, who knows how many billions of people will be on this earth? How much should we care about those people 2,000 years from now? And basically, the way the models are designed, uh, the people 2,000 years from now are counted less than a penny on the dollar. Mm. 
What do you say? They are but- discounted like assets are discounted on Wall Street. They are discounted like stocks are discounted. When you project the rate of return on a bond, you discount the future value of those bonds because they are property that has to be adjusted for inflation. Unfortunately, the math, the mathematical models of the economists, when they do cost benefit analyses, treat the future generations as if they were property, not persons. What do you what do you say to people who say, look, things change over centuries and millennia? Uh, you know, you go to Cambodia and you look at Angkor Wat, you look at the the old great civilizations that have once existed. Populations move, they rebuild, they adapt. Yeah, you can go inland, build in Chicago. Well, I'm probably yeah, that's safe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is is that the answer? Is that is that the extent of it? We just all moved to Chicago. Everyone in New York no, goes to Chicago. No, it's not going to affect us so much. It's going to affect our descendants, and it's going to greatly affect our descendants. Certainly, two thousand years from now, uh, probably, uh, but maybe not so much. A hundred years from now. The thing is, the real question is, should we even care about our descendants 2,000 years from now? 